Hello everyone, um, thank you so much for joining me today for this live mixing session and I'm sorry for this technical issue that we have just keep you waiting for several minutes so I'm so thankful to everyone that is joining today with me for this live mixing session and today I hope you all are safe in your homes and I hope you are gonna enjoy this mixing session with me so we were watching one of my latest music videos titled motion uh, which was featuring legendary uh, prince bass player uh, ida nielsen mm -hmm. and um, so we had also uh, eric moore on drums one of my favorite and the best drummer in the world for me um, and also we have um, on guitars, Roisy from Canada, a talented musician, and also we have um, the horn sections players from Turkey, which we tracked in Turkey, and also we have <coughs> the mixing session done in um, one of the best recording studios in Hollywood, um, Sound City Studios. So today, the same mix we are gonna do in the box so let me just show you and share some of the uh, tracks that i created and then i will show you how i mixed it and usually that's uh, how i work is i first do the arrangement once i finish the arrangement i start making sure that i am really happy with the sound that i get and after that i sent it for mixing uh, and then after that for mastering. So first of all, I would like to mention that I'm using uh, Orion 32 Plus Gen 3, the latest uh, audio interface from Antelope Audio in this uh, Orion 32, uh, what do you call, uh, in this, uh, in this generation of the audio interface that they have. So uh, also I have uh, MP32 preamps, 32 channel preamps, and because my studio is big <coughs> and I usually track uh, bands as well, so this is one of my favorite uh, converters that I have from them. I also have, um, uh, during this session, I used um, microphones from Aston microphones and I also used a um, Verge microphone on piano while I was tracking live uh, upright piano and we have also during the band recordings we have used um, for drums we have used Lewitt microphones we have used also um, on the other sessions we have used from Erlund we have used also from Austrian audio microphones uh, so um now let me show you how i did the arrangement so overall we have here about uh, 40 tricks 39 tricks but some of them uh, because i already bounced from my midi track uh, to um, um, from my midi track i tracked it uh, um, i bounced it um, and made it audio files some of the files um, I already bounced it like three of them just bounced it as a one file so to make the project less heavy so here are my files and first of all we have here some simple melody let me play for this this one for you This one is just going till the end, uh, till the end almost. So it's just simple melody, and this is just the basement of the track, I would say. So after that, we have an electric piano. Um, can see sorry for this uh, as you can see we have some uh, files from 
like um, there are some already effects that I bounced uh, so um, because of this um, uh, we you can't see what effects I already used but because they were already in MIDI section from MIDI section I already made how I want that my electric piano sound so uh, that's why we don't have any effects here so uh, let me turn up my volume up a little bit so I hope you are listening me more better now so um, <coughs> then after this we have uh, some kind of synth chords so let's play this one let's see I, I read some comments that my voice is low so I'm trying to bring it up can you hear me better <laughs> so I hope you can hear me better now okay so um, we have the synth chords here. This is my synth chords and after this I have some kind of lead solo which is kind of panned to left um, and you can't see it here because I already bounced it like that way. So um, This is my lead solo section and then I have some strings here. So and after this I have some pad, really nice worm and pads. Usually I like using some warm pads during my arrangements so after this i have some extra bass kind of thing um, to make it more bright solo kind of melody so I have this only in this part and after this I have at the end I have some lead before this there is no any leads this is just for the outro and then I have some piano piano I will play together because uh, usually I track uh, four or five microphones when I record upright piano so you will listen with some effects already how it sounds so this is my piano and then after this I have some delay scenes so after this I have some organ <laughs> uh, 
from it, sounds, this, these are sounds that I use. Uh, they are from UV. Uh, if you are not familiar with them, you can check them out. Uh, from Falcon Library. And also I used the synths from uh, SynMaster um, KV331 Audio. That's their name. Um, and I also hear what I use. This is really nice stuff, actually. So lots of people are asking me, what is this? So I will show you now. So These are some effects that that I that I created. So I use I uh, track this uh, using this uh, pedal from Expressive uh, E Company, which is uh, called like 5D Touch pedal, where when you touch your hands, it's like making this effect, like and play with the keyboard once you touch the keyboard nodes and you just touch to this one it's making this this effect so it's a really nice one um, and after this I have some horn section played by me like about six horns then I bounce it as a one file so you will listen how it sounds top of this uh, we have tracked a uh, live sax four of them uh, trombone uh, let's listen how the sax sounds together with my track so this is with only sax and then after this comes trombones four of them and trumpet as well four of them so let's listen how all together so we tracked this in turkey uh, via online i was in armenia they were in turkey so we were doing this live session via internet and then um after this comes the magic so here is eric moore drums um, on trumpet, let's let, okay. Yeah, on trumpet, I have API 550 from Waves Audio that I have used, uh, and also Mac DSP um, channel G EQ. So I did some EQ on this uh, horn section, but after this, look what happens. This is the kick. So the original kick that we recorded is this one. So, um, I'm not sure if you hear the difference, but it's huge. So I'm using here, let me show you. So this is just a fab filter. Uh, okay, I'm using here from Antelope Audio's plugins, really great stuff where I'm boosting the low frequency uh, around 40 till 60 um, that I boosted and then I also used uh, channel strip from Metric Halo, which is one of the best one actually. Um, I used also from Acoustica Audio, uh, L Ray. Um, this is a really miracle pr plugin, and thanks for this uh, to Greg Wells actually. Um, I will turn this and bypass that you could hear but let me show you first the plugins what i have used i have used cla76 from uh, waves audio again just uh, giving the attack to one and then the release to seven and then just a little bit boost the output section and from the input a little bit down so to give some kind of nice compression and then we have here SSL EQ, one of the best EQs. Uh, again, I boosted the uh, low frequency here. Um, oops, let me share the screen, sorry. 
Ja. Um, CLA76 was this plugin. Sorry, I, I need to repeat this because I did. I was not um, watching carefully while I was talking. I thought I was sharing my screen. Sorry for this. So SSL EQ and CLA76 from Waves and L Ray Channel Strip from Metricalo. This is on my kick. Nantelope Audios, these two plugins. Um, so let's listen this without Antelope Audio plugin. And I'm going to turn this plugin on. Look what huge difference. It's like without this this um, plugin, it sounds like pff, pff, pff. and after turning this on, it sounds like boom, 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 real, real nice, which I really like in this track. So um, actually, the most important thing here in this um, track uh, for me is the kick, snare and uh, the bass is very important. So and also the horns. So let's move forward and let me show you what we have else. So I did not actually use gate compression or gate just cutting off the other signal because it's not hurting me during this mixing session. So you can use some kind of gate from C1, but on this track I did not feel like I need really that one. So. On hi hats, it's just simple SSL EQ, a little bit boost the high frequency, and then again on snare top, which is again really important in this track. Without so, we have here uh, impressor plugin from Antelope Audio again, and again another EQ 55. 55B, so uh, we have also H compressor here, really nice one that it's just to make sure it's not clipping. Huge difference. So uh, after this, oh. Let's turn this on and then we have the snare button, which is just again another SSL EQ and on toms we have some Antelope Audio, AFX2 though again, the plugins from Antelope Audio. It is just the 200 Hz, I just little bit brought up to have a little bit more fat sound on during the uh, this toms. <laughs> So, and um, also I have on all tones this other, the same plugin, and then after that we have on left and right overheads, I have ML8000 from MacDSP, really nice one. Uh, so let me show you what's happening. I just, for overheads, I like always to little bit making brightness, because sometimes... So without it just this brightness is very important here because like there are lots of things that I wanted to make sure um, we can hear the drummer nicely and the drums sounding really nice. So after this, the most important thing, bass. Let me play how it sounds right now. <laughs> this plugin so 
we have a couple of choices here that I, I was like not sure which one I will choose. I can use a from AFX to do like the impressor plugin to make just really nice uh, sound. And then after this, I use the CLA bass just cutting the distortion and pitch just down. It's just not too much thing happening here. But the R bass from uh, Waves was important here. Uh, so, uh, which is giving a little bit more fatness to the bass. But the most important thing here that I use is the uh, PSP plugin uh, from Avedis Audios E27. Actually, I don't imagine any bass track mixing without this plugin. This is really miracle. This is like a kind of magic that makes happen. Like uh, the high frequencies on slaps, this plugin is just the killer stuff. So let me show you what's what it does. <laughs> While I ask, uh, when I track bass actually, and I track like kind of slap bass, sometimes I really like making it so bright because I want to hear every single triple notes, everything what's happening there. So this is the plugin that I actually, without this, there is no bass for me. Like mostly the slap bass are like killer. And I can use actually another uh, impressor, arroser like from Empirical Labs sound really nice stuff but for now let's turn this off and then after this we have guitars which actually is wet already i bought we bounced it mm, wet <laughs> and after this yeah the track done so let me show you how it sounds with mix and without the mix uh, There is lots of plugins on uh, mas my master channel, uh, which I would like to turn off, that you could hear the difference. now I'm going to turn off all the plugins that I've used in during this mix so that you can hear the difference. Um, give me a second, please. Yeah. So now I'm going to turn off all these plugins. that you could hear how it sounds like just the arrangement by its own so yeah actually there was a trick uh, yeah on my bus that I'm sending my reverbs I'm using uh, from from waves audio my preset actually where you can find it from artist section by going to wax Stepanian vs wax called so all the reverbs that I am using in this track is just this one. So let's hear now how it sounds. Can you believe? Totally different stuff like... So now I'm gonna turn this on back with the plugins so that you can hear the difference.
actually um, this is the in the box mix where I'm like once I bounce it for the mixing engineer or if it's not it's sometimes I like to have second ear from my friends or my partners with who I work like I collaborate with Sterling Sound and actually this one was mastered um, by uh, Capital Records uh, by Evren Gochnar, Grammy winning mastering engineer who worked with Maria Carey and many other legendary uh, singers. So um, I will show you the original mix that I uh, we actually uh, bounced it in Sound City making it uh, using the conversion from uh, Neve console they have really amazing stuff and uh, also we have used some TK from TK audio some compressions from them so I will show you uh, how it was sounding when we finally because in this session it's mostly I'm showing the arrangement how I made it happen once I was happy and I make sure it sounds what I want. I uh, turn off all the plugins and just after that, if there is some not serious sounds that I really exactly want that the mixing engineer got this same sound, if there is no any of that, um, that's how I do. I turn off the old plugins and then just bounce it for the mixing engineer. But if there is some very important uh, tracks that I really want that mixing engineer don't touch to it I just bounce it with my effects that and I mentioned that don't touch to this file so but uh, because this is just the in the box this is not the original mix uh, and uh, original mix you can find on YouTube by just searching it motion wax Stepanian. so but uh, I will show you how we bounced in Sterling uh, Sound City, uh, where we were happy and sent it to Capital Records for mastering. So this is how it sounds. <laughs> so comparing the one that we have doing right now in the box. So, and here is the mastering from Capital Records. I will compare this with my one in the box now. time let's listen the capital records mastering and then my mastering So here we have one on Master Bass channel. We have one of my favorite plugins from Plugin Alliance Black Box Analog Design HG2, which is really a beast. So we have Slate Digital, uh, which is kind of gluing all the music together, you know, this plugin. And one of my favorite plugins from Waves, this one, uh, TG Mastering, where I'm just spreading the speakers a little bit to make it sound more wider and just a little bit EQing and just playing with these tweaks and then we have the Ozone 9 and we have from Acoustic Audio again this Celestia plugin um, so this is kind of I like how the EQ is 
working on this. It's actually channel strip, I, but I just put it on master bass because I really like how it sounds. Give, giving kind of more low ends and like kind of sounding more warm. And then the stealth limiter from IK Multimedia, one of the best ones for me. Um, and that's all. So, uh, this is all actually what I have used. Um, yeah, and I have used also this Omni Shapes from Waves again. Um, which is really, I, I really like how this sounds actually. I I touched to the EQ a little bit and the pre, but I, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm trying to find. Um, something here, yeah. This is on the top snare. Yeah, and this one, so. I forgot to show you how it sounds without the Sheps plugin. I like how it's the EQ is like amazing. And also these plugins from we have I don't know if you know, but we have many options here like compressors. We have EQs, which is coming with um, Orion 32 plus. Uh, so you can go to the website and check out what they have. So if you have any questions, I think um, I told her I shared everything. So also I would like to just solo the drums only with bass. Just give me a couple minutes. Um, So let's hear the drums only by its own. Yeah. Can you hear how the low kick like really sounding like a killer like Turning off the bass plugins. Turning on. Yeah. And this part during the slap. Turning off the kick plugins, look what's happening. Turning on. to also go to this section closely like uh, with this touch pedal of from uh, expressive e how it sounds like in the mix <laughs> can you hear that <laughs> this stuff really nice <laughs> organs here can you hear 
matter oh. how it's everything is gluing there is nothing uh, extra just and i saw many arrangements like they create like more than 150 arrangement it's it does not sound like full you know but this track is just 40 like if i count just with the pianos just opening the piano group files from the original uh, files uh, i will say it's not passing more than 50 tracks but imagine how it sounds nice together everything like there is no too much stuff happening here uh, even it's too much already but it's like everything is like kind of working together you know so uh what else i wanted to show before answering to your questions um yeah there is some i would like to show you the bass here the extra bass that i created on the uh, keyboard see this thing it's bolding the solo of the lead actually and making sounding more not nice and warm see? <laughs> solo this with the bass that you could hear how it's working actually together um, yeah. <laughs> So overall, it's this that I would like to share. So if you have any questions, just let me know and I will go ahead and answer to it. So let me read your questions. Oh, by the way, uh, why antelope audio actually? Uh, don't don't uh, yeah why actually antelope audio i was a user of different company um i was using okay universal audio but i was like kind of once i heard these converters on this uh from antelope audio i was like blown away seriously this is not a joke i really love the converters on antelope audio it makes totally different sound i don't know how uh, there is no too, there is no color you know on these sound cards that i get and only the um uh, i forgot the name of the what they used but um there was some stuff that they are using i read about this and i was like uh this the signal of this outputs of this uh, machine is coming really strong and it's really nice and clean and there is no extra flavors like you you just know that whatever you hear that's it there is no extra coloring so i really love this gear what i'm using now before this i was using orion um, studio uh, and I have also the discrete 4 one so but my main audio interface right now is Orion 32 plus Gen 3 so let's read use the impressor plugin please use the impressor impressor plugin from um, Antelope Audio or Empiricia Labs gyritic and impressor really killer yes I agree with you which device do you have? Okay, I have, as I mentioned here, I will show you on, on the big screen. So I have here uh, Orion 32 Plus, which is connected 
through DB25 cables from clothes uh, connected to my MP32. All these 32 channels are used already. So uh, four of them are coming from uh, Avedis Audio, MA5 and um, MD7 um, preamps that are connected to these uh, first four channels and uh, others are from MP32 that I am using during my tracking. So that's what I have. Discrete 8, I never used it, I can't say anything about it, but Discrete 4 is really nice device. I use, use actually when I am uh, touring or just going for playing live concerts. So it's just, I like how it's like, it's mobile gear, just taking and just going while doing live shows. Yeah, I'm sorry about the screen that I did not share it. Uh, when you recorded with Washtech and Ida, is that videos live? What software do you use to produce that? Your videos are actually well produced. Okay, there are different ways that I'm doing this actually. Uh, I got lots of questions about this, but um, I had videos that I have done through Cubase. In the past, I was using Cubase. Now I'm on Logic Pro X. Um, I was using from Logic the live stream software, and during that software, I was just tracking, connecting with the artists from in different country. And that's what that's how I was tracking some of the videos. But sometimes I use also Skype just to make sure I'm in the session, just uh, because I already write. Uh, if there is notes, I write everything to give the artist to make sure he will not just go and play different stuff um, because we don't want to waste the studio time as well too much. So um, I just write the notes. And I uh, not only the charts, but also I am writing in which place what I really want to get. Uh, if they need to hear uh, the example, I record it by myself and just bounce it separate and send it to them to make sure that um, they are like um, really um, gonna play however I really want. So that's the first version. The, the second version is just, yeah, the second version of the Skype. And the third version is just uh, sometimes by myself, I'm just going for the session, but mostly everything is doing uh, via online. If the, I'm not using the Cubase, um, I just track it with just whatever video stream software is gonna be available under my hands or from the artist whatever they have because I just I don't need to track it by myself I trust my partners or engineers with who I work and during the sessions I just want to sh see make sure everything and miking everything is set up correctly that later we don't have any problems because sometimes um, in the past not in my videos but with clients with who you work they record and they send, then you figure out that they put the microphone position in wrong place or you hear some extra noises that are coming from their session and you can't just, it's it's too late to say, hey, can you re-record? So that's why I always love being in the session via video to make sure everything is going correct. Um, and then let's see what else. Great drums, yeah, actually. Thank you so much, you are welcome. Slap as if alive. <laughs> I'm not sure if you are hearing it all mono, but this might be the 
software that I am using right now because this is the first time and I'm sorry if you hear any problems during this live stream. Yeah, Ida is actually my favorite female bass player. Uh, the best one. Really the best one. Yeah, check the original because you are going to listen it directly from YouTube. Right now, this software, uh, I'm not sure if you are listening through my microphone or audio interface, but, but we were trying to make the sound coming from audio interface, but I don't know, we had some issues. So I'm sorry for this if you are listening the sound a little bit not too rich and mono. Yeah, those who wants to check the original sound, just go to YouTube again and just type motion Vax Stepanian featuring you will see Ida Nielsen, uh, Eric Moore on drums, Roy Ziv from Canada, guitarist and um, horns players from uh, Turkey, my mixing engineer Alan Konakoglu from United States. Um, so I played also uh, this track live uh, at NAM with Ida Nielsen. You can check out that video as well. You don't use AFX to do in the master. Honestly, because uh, actually the AFX to do I got about a month ago. And um, I was just, uh, I did not get a chance to play with it on my master channel. But I promise I will do. Who played the brass? Turkey. You can check out the names. It's really hard for me to remember. Uh, but you can go on YouTube. Well, let me see the names. I'm sorry about this. Uh, We have the names from the trumpet Tolga Bilgin, tenor sax Anil Salil, trombone Hassan Gozetlik. So, and then what else? Denmark. Ida Nilsson is from Denmark, yes. So, I don't see any questions to answer, but if you have any question, I will wait one more minute to receive your questions and then if you have any mix that you have done and it's online on YouTube you can send me now I will check and judge the mix just to listen and let me let you know my opinion about your mix or later you can contact me via email my website is vagstepanian.com www.vahagnstepanyan.com so and thank you again to antelope audio for this live stream yeah i don't see any extra questions so if you can you make it louder? My voice, okay. <clears throat> I hope you can hear myself louder now. So about, okay, what are your go-to plugins from Antelope? First of all, I would like to say that the gear is very easy to use. I like, actually, let me show you my screen. So I like how this thing here on the routing part works. You can just simply drag and drop. There is no big headache working on this. And I like the mixing mixture option that I have four mixtures, four different mixtures. Really helpful stuff. And the effects is just most times I don't use through here because I have the AFX to draw, but if during the live tracking I need to use um, 
in real time the effects, then I'm going here and adding the effects. So my first go to five plugins from Antelope Audio is just this gyratic uh, X compressor. Um, this tube 176 is really amazing. Sounds on vocals is just unbelievable. I always use uh, when I track, but while I track, I just use it, and I just sometimes I don't record it because I try to be careful while I do the uh, sessions uh, during this uh, during the recording sessions because later when you want to change something, you just find out that it's just it was recorded too loud or whatever. That's why later I just do it same printing on AFX to do. So and I uh, the EQs from EQs I love the BAE BAE it's 1073. And there are actually lots of stuff that I like everything I like here, but this 4K Brown uh, EQ is really amazing on drums. I use this on here as well in this track. I use this tube child a lot. Uh, also, the impressor is actually sounding really good. So these are my top five plugins from them that I will like in everything I use. And also, the most important thing, this reverb actually, uh, is really amazing stuff. Their reverb is like uh, unbelievable. I will say I there is very for me when I track pianos this aura verb is number one to go there is no any other reverb that can beat for me for piano tracking mostly that I have in my studio upright piano sounds absolutely amazing I have some videos uh, on my YouTube channel again you can go to my YouTube channel Vax Stepanian Music uh, so and check the sounds and the reviews and the videos that we have about this reverb as well it sounds absolutely amazing so realistic on pianos unbelievable um, so and I like how actually the ACO rate is working actually the Thunderbolt latency mode it's super fast there is no latency that I am having any issues so that's all from the gear and my top plugins. So, what else? If possible, please check. Here is a song I mixed, has just been released. Okay, let me see. Here is a song I mix. So I'm trying to find the link. Where is the link? It says, if possible, please check above. There is not any links that I can see, sorry. But let me sign in. No, I can't see any links that I can just listen and comment. Send it to my email. I will just type my email on the website. And also my YouTube channel. So send it to me and then I will listen and judge it for you and let me uh, I will let you know my opinion about it because I can't find any links here. It says here is my song please check but I, there is no any links. 
So a few more seconds until the show will end. So if you have any more questions, please let me know. If not, thank you so much again for joining me. And I truly appreciate everyone who is uh, watching. Let me also check the Facebook comments because it's going also on Facebook Live. I don't see any comments here, uh, questions. But anyway, so my final thoughts about this, uh, let me also share my final thoughts about this gear. So, and if you have just, if you are in a, if you don't know if you are buying this gear or not, I will say this just, um, I believe that Antelope Audio is creating the most um, versatile and flexible gear that actually uh, they are making. Why? First of all, um, there is no any any brand that I know today that are making like 32 preamps um, or 64 preamps. Because sometimes when you order the gear, you need to buy two more, three more, four more to connect together uh, and make it like work for you. Sometimes when you track like orchestras, like I have many people who are traveling from different places to record in my studio. And while they come, I can't just imagine if I buy five gear to connect to record a full band so that's why i believe this these gears are very flexible and they are just i like it's just two you unit the mp32 even if i need to go to some other country to track um, full band i can just take it out from my iraq unit and just go and the orion is just one you and very very nice nicely made with the sound there is no any thing that I can't say it's really nice one and I can't wait the, uh, to see what's next gonna happen with this gear uh, so that's all that's all about my thoughts the plugins are actually I hear many thoughts that's like oh the AFX to do is like crashing it's not working blah 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 but I will say this I, I'm it's already month non-stop every day I'm using I never had a crash so I don't know if you are using a PC or Mac, but on my Mac, I never had a problem of these plugins that are crashing or whatever. So they work really stable, like they are really good, they are really nice. Um, and I know soon they might have the update. So wait for this and hopefully we will have more nice news is from antelope audio so let me see if you have more comments and if not then i will say goodbye to you can you talk about this is have an anti-rising cutoff filter are you using direct outs can you talk about okay can you talk about the root thing okay let me there are lots of questions now i haven't answered them We are not. What are your okay? Anyways, check the original. It is awesome. You played the Kiss Fantastic. Hats off to all the musicians. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate you. There are more videos with legendary musicians. Really, I like all and I really respect all the musicians with who I worked. They are fantastic. Like, uh, 
how can you send multi tracks to monitor how can you send multi tracks to monitor i don't understand what do you mean how can you send multi tracks to monitor but this is the routing how it's happening so let me show you The routing, as I mentioned, just if you want to go from lining to just uh, USB rack is when you are connected with USB. And when you are connected through Thunderbolt, uh, it's Thunderbolt TB means Thunderbolt. When first I bought this gear, I was like, what, what means TB? TB, I was like also confused, but this TB called Thunderbolt. So if I want to uh, if I'm right now, I'm connected through Thunderbolt uh, because when you use with USB recording, it's actually turning on only the 24 channels. So when you use with uh, Thunderbolt, the 32 ports are activating. See, till here. So if I want from my lining to go to USB rack or Thunderbolt, thund Thunderbolt rack, that means I just drag and drop. That's it. So. And whatever you want, just uh, there is MADI connect in, uh, connect connections that you can do aid, aid that in. Um, yeah, you gave a question. Are you using direct outputs? Yes, I am using direct outputs. Uh, only the first four preamps, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using from Avedis Audio MA5 and the MD7 uh, preamps which are the best preamps for me and it's actually there is no any for me there is no any preamps that they can beat to these preamps but uh, i'm super happy with mp32 because i can get whatever i want in this world we have so many plugins from different companies that are so flexible and um, soon i believe if it already not happened but uh, those who are mixing on analog gear analog gear is soon coming out because thunderbolt uh, th um, mixing the box is so popular today's plugins are just amazing and it's gonna be more amazing because every day they create more and more so what else what other question does this have anti-lysing cut filter can you talk about the routing? I spoke already about the routing. So about the cutoff filter, I don't know what you mean because uh, if you are meaning about the um, during the export, during the bones, then yes, I'm using, but I'm using it from uh, logic. But so if you are meaning if there is any cutoff filter plugin, I'm not sure what you mean about this. So anyway, so if you have any more questions, you can just reach me direct. I'm available on Instagram. Uh, I'm also available on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, so do you do the plugins back into the audio above 41 to one? No, I'm just actually, I track always 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. So, um, but I don't see a huge difference between 44 and 48, you know. So sometimes uh, I had tracks actually. There was a moonlight uh, that you can check. Eric Mariental on sax was playing, and we tracked that in 96 kilohertz. I believe there are some instruments that you need to track in 96, but today there is not such again i'm telling you there is no such a huge big difference uh, because our ears are just listening from 20 till 20 kilohertz so it's just if you calculate and measure how what you are getting back after that and then it's going to itunes and there are people are ending up listening just mp3 <laughs> for me it's just funny you know 
So anyway, that's all I think because there is no any more qu uh, questions. Thank you again for joining me today. I truly appreciate every one of you. Please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel because there are a lot of more stuff that are going to happen soon and there will be more music coming out and I am currently working on my album. Um, so that's all actually about that's I think I talked about everything. So thank you so much again. So I'm going to stop this live streaming and see you again hopefully soon cheers bye bye so for you again i will just put this motion that you enjoyed or or you can just go and enjoy yourself i will leave it to you so anyway have a good day. Cheers. Bye.